This isn't going to work well. <laughs> it's fun. If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. We're going to gut my garage and build an empire starting right now. Now we're going to take the old point of view cam and I'm going to take you down into the hobby room and kind of show you some of the challenges. So let's just get going, shall we? Hey, welcome to the new hobby room, the future home of the Brown Smith Railroad subdivision of the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. Anyway, uh, it's a garage basically. It's a third part of a three car garage. There's two spaces over there, one over here. Cindy, the first lady of model railroading gets that side. I and our railroad get this side. In this episode, we get racked and lit. <laughs> Starting right now. Morning rail fans, it is bright and early on December 26th. We've got Christmas behind us. I've sort of gotten moved in here at the new place and now it is time to get started on the new hobby room. Now you guys know how excited I am to get this thing going, right? I've been like dreaming about this for like three months. You know, something just occurs to me as I'm doing this. When I took the other racks apart, I went ahead and just laid them down on the ground. So I don't have to worry about them falling over. Let's lay them down on the ground. Oh, why reinvent the wheel um, to do this? Let's make that happen. Now, oh, the problem with doing this is see how it wants to do the old scissor action? If I don't do it right, we could lose a finger right here on international YouTube television. Okay, so I just got back from Lowe's after purchasing these Lithonia lighting four foot LED wraparound light fixtures. Uh, they put out 4,500 lumens. It's got a 4K color, which is pretty nearly the white white that we like on our models and stuff. I'm gonna mark out where I'm gonna put these lights. Now, I've decided that uh, I want the edge of the light to be one foot away from the layout this way and one foot away from the layout this way. That's where the first fixture is gonna go. Isn't that exciting? Yay. All right, well, the light fixtures are up, the cable is run, and uh, I've made everything up upstairs. I didn't put everything back together yet because we need to make sure this all works before I button it all up. So uh, it's getting a little dark other than my studio lighting here. So it's moment of truth time. Let's flip the switch and see what happens. Uh. Oops. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. That wasn't the switch. Watch this. Boom! Let there be light, people! In this episode, we bring the hammer down, starting right now. Just before we get started, something to keep in mind. I still have all this crap all over the place in the hobby room because there's no place to put it until I build the shelf to stick it up on. Now, the thing is, I can't build the shelf until I build the wall, and so the stuff's gonna be on the floor in the way while we build the wall. Anyway, we're gonna work around it. It's what a regular guy does. So what I've got going on over here is I've got about two feet of bench work coming off of a stud right here. That's the width of this bench work. About a five foot space in between, and then two more feet of bench work. <laughs> Boom, first nail is in. There we go, first piece of wood's nailed up. Oh, the feeling of wood being driven by a hammer, people. And uh, that gives you an idea. Back here is gonna be hidden staging, which as you can see, won't be accessible unless I roll this door up, but uh, what do I care? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go grab Cindy Brown, the first lady of model railroading. I'm gonna bring her in here, stand her up against the wall, and we're gonna sort of finalize some of this, okay? Okay, so I have Cindy Brown, First Lady of Model Railroading, here because, as I was saying, if Mama can't see the top deck, Mama gonna kick me out. So here's what we need to do. Show and tell. So there, there'd be a train on here. Shoot! Wow. Wow, that wind is like, you guys, you don't even know. Wow. We, we may not make it through this no. little video piece. You like that? Shoot, shoot. Does that work for you? Yes, I like it. it works Boom, well. we have the First Lady of Model Railroading seal of approval. And, uh, 
Away we go. All right, well. I stamp your approval. She stamps it approved. All right, give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. you love know. you. I love you too. Now get out of here. This is man's work. Whoa! See? I See? Stuff all over the floor. Oh, this is terrible. This is embarrassing. That felt like wood all the way down, so that works. All right, so I've got a, a driver on my drill motor here. It's a 20 volt Yanga Changa one. Um, I'm hoping that I can drive it most of the way with this to save us some time. Uh, not certain if that's gonna happen, but uh, get the old lag right in there. Put it through the bracket. Well, if my batteries hold out, that may be the way to go. Boom, everybody. In this episode, we finish everything we need to finish to be able to put in the bench work. You just need to ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you, punk? Hey, good afternoon, rail fans. It is January 2nd. And uh, we're gonna get to work on the hobby room after working a full day of work like many of you. What you see here is the framed walls and I'm gonna show you in a second that I made the shelves, uh, part of the shelves. And I'm gonna show you how I did that coming up here real soon. But for right now, what I need to do is get all that plywood out of the bed of my truck, get it into the new hobby room and we're gonna slam it up on this uh, wall we got back here. It's interesting, the floor also apparently slopes this way because that's lying right on the floor, but there's a gap on that side. I think uh, I think we don't care right now. We're gonna screw the thing to the thing and move on to the next thing. I got a splinter. Whew. Hey, there you go. Got both pieces of the sheathing up. And already, this thing is really starting to be uh, sturdy, robust. I'm really pleased with it. It came out pretty nice. So I'm just gonna go around the room and keep doing what you just saw me do. Make one mark, and make the second mark. Lag bolt, <clears throat> washer, bracket, drill with a driver deal on it. Let's put this in. Just like that, first bracket's up. I'm gonna get the rest of these in. I'll come back and see it. We're gonna build the shelf that goes up here. Okay, let's build some shelving. Uh, before we do though, just a little bit of background. When I put this shelf in right here, I stopped it short of this wall by 24 inches. So I could build one piece that's 24 inches deep and set it up here, because every deck's gonna be 24 inches deep. It's gonna look nice and pretty. And we move on to happy railroading. Then I put this plywood up. Guess what's wrong with that picture? I'll give you a second. Yeah, uh, by putting up the plywood, it's no longer 24 inches. It's like 23 and something. So I didn't think about that when I put it in, whatever. In this episode, we're gonna finish these shelves. We're gonna install these decks. We're going to reintegrate a logging camp. We're gonna scrape our head till it's bloody. We're gonna get completely frustrated and humiliate ourselves in front of the entire model railroad community boy all of that's coming up starting right now hey so one of the things that i've learned about building this layout is something of this size does not go quickly <laughs> it's taken me a long time in the same way that we set these shelf brackets on the wall i'm going to do the same process basically to lag them up into this uh cross member we did here i uh, just pretty much get back there and drill me a hole Like that, get a lag, put it in. That's not going anywhere. Goes up just like that, that edge flush. And then we drive a screw to hold it in place because it's kind of cantilever. Until I get the lags in, it just wants to fall off. Some of you who have been with us for a while are gonna recognize this as our refurbished logging camp module. 
that uh, we actually built out in season one of It's My Railroad. Well, I think I've figured out a way to integrate it into what I'm gonna be doing here in the hobby room. I mean, two of these that are two feet less than an inch and a half, which with new math is 22 and a half inches. And we need two two by threes that are the same length. In this episode, we harness the power of the Hoover Dam, starting right now. Today, what I wanna get done is I wanna put four switches in right here, four switches. Um, one of those switches is going to control the power to this garage door opener. We don't want that to open up unless we want that one to open up. Uh, I'm gonna have another switch that's gonna turn on the DCC to the layout. Another switch will turn on all the LED lighting above the decks. And the fourth switch is auxiliary. That's gonna turn on the lighting to all the structures and and all that kind of detail kind of lighting stuff we're gonna have. Anyway, that's my plan. Each of those switches gets routed to a receptacle. There's a drywall screw right there that I put in to hold a cable out of the way. I gotta get that screw out of there before we go any further. Oh, I'm glad I'm tall. By the way, I am using uh, what we call a paddle bit to get this done. The connector on, we just slide it down in through the knockout and run the lock nut back up on there. Standard disclaimer, if you're not an electrician, uh, either get someone who is or come up with a plan B, all right? I don't want to get sued any more than I already do because I was showing electrical work and something blew up, all right? Let's just move on from there. Okay, so here we are behind the layout. Uh, right over here is the wall we just put the switches in. Here is uh, the back of the layout. Now, here's the thing. We're gonna have trains running back here on sort of the back side of what we're calling like the helix, but it's not really a helix, but I guess it is a helix. I don't know, you call it what you want to. Here's what I'm gonna call it, something else. But um, I wanna put the power outlets here. One down. Two down, just like you've seen us do before. Knock out the knockouts. Standard pair of dikes, just something to pound it in with and grab a hold and break that sucker off. Cause that's how I rail, baby. And we're gonna route some cable through it. Up above me, I've got the handy box extension where I drop the outlet down and then ran the power and switch leg out of that down the wall to the switch banks. Now this switch right here, turn it on, turn it off. That turns on and off the garage door opener and it works really well um, at this point, frankly. These other three switches control these three receptacles so I can turn on my DCC, my LED lighting, and then of course my auxiliary lighting and auxiliary power. Lastly, I added these convenience receptacles here right under the top deck to make it a little easier to get power out here when I need it. In this episode, we reintegrate another module from the old layout and we put in a backdrop. Boom, a two for one deal on this episode, starting right now. You know, some people have been saying, hey Steve, you're a little too subdued. How about pumping it up a little bit? So there you go. How'd that work out for you? So what I think I wanna do is go ahead and reintegrate switch junction into the new layout reconnect it to the whole logging camp coal mine module. 
that'll get me that close to being able to run trains on the tail end of it here, coming off of the old logging camp module. Now, luckily for me, when I originally built the BSR, I put these two sections together in a way that I could pull them apart, relocate the layout, and then just reinstall them together, only fixing a couple of little pieces here and there. And the reason I say it's lucky for me is because that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So anyway, for better or for worse, I'm just gonna go for it, okay? I think that's a regular model railroader kind of thing. Um, I can't think it through to the nth degree or I'll never get anything done in here. That came off. Oh, I don't like hitting it that hard. My baby! We will resurrect it from the grave. I can hold it with one hand, look at the top of it. Still looking pretty good so far. This is completely unscripted, people. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Um, but I need a break, okay? So here we go. <laughs> Boom, one shot, it's off. That's how you do it when you're a regular guy, model railroader, yaha. I have me a plywood module to sit on the layout. Well, there you go. Switch Junction is sitting on the framework for the new layout. It's being integrated as we speak. I hope you are as excited as I am. Hey, rail fans, it is February 1st. We are back in the hobby room and it is the first lady's birthday weekend. So I don't get to spend a whole lot of time out here. Although I did tell the first lady that if uh, she wants me to be everything I can be for her birthday, I gotta get my model railroad time in, which between you and I, it's not exactly true, but it sounded good when I said it. So anyway, it worked. We're out here. Let's get some work done before she calls me inside. Yeah, okay, I'm not certain how this is gonna go because we gotta fish it around. Existing stuff, hopefully without damaging too much. Bending it, getting it around to there. Well, there's the first piece of backdrop in, and I gotta tell you, I'm glad I went ahead and made the curve there. There's, there's just no seam. It looks totally awesome, at least from my point of view. And there you go, the backdrop is installed. Now listen, we still have to go through and fill in the cracks, cover the screws, sand it and repaint it. And we're not going to do that till we're done cutting the holes in it for where the trains are going to pop through. But I think once it's done, it's going to look amazing. And I'm really stoked. In this episode, we're going to rise to the occasion. Ha <laughs> ha! Starting right now. What is not so exciting is it's like 38 degrees outside right now. And it got down to freezing overnight. And I happen to know that in this area, it pushes north of 100 during the summer. So what that means is in a couple episodes, when we start laying track, we're gonna have to worry about expansion and contraction. Something I've never had to deal with before. But like I said, that's for a future episode. What I intend to do is to make a piece that follows the radius around and gets around behind the logging camp and screw that to the framework.
And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty pumped up about the way this looks right now. Um, like I said, I've spent countless hours going over this in my head to the point where I can't sleep at night sometimes. Obsess much? Rail fans, that is one heck of a day's work. I got the entire riser built on this deck of the layout all the way around. It's very stable. Uh, make some nice curves and transitions. And I just sit here imagining my trains going up and down this thing. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I put in this LED lighting and we're gonna go behind the scenes on the Brownsmith Railroad. Boom, baby, right now. All right, let's start off by talking about LED lighting. Last week, I told you that this week, we were gonna talk about the LED lighting I installed on the layout. And I try to be a man of my word, even though I am in construction, which is a contradiction in terms, but whatever, I'm being truthful right now. I'm gonna read the specs off the back of the package in such a way that you think I actually know what I'm talking about. The color is cool white, 5,000 Kelvin, cool white. Just like that. Uh, I ended up using a 5 8 inch paddle bit so this connector will clear the hole. And now we'll just sort of stuff it through there. I made these wedges out of half inch plywood and it's a pretty cool deal. You just sort of put it in there about where you want it and then tap it in with a hammer. And it just holds it in there really taut. It didn't seem to screw up the LEDs or anything. In this episode, we ask and answer the question, what is this pink foam board doing in my hobby room? That's coming up right now. I'm staring here at the logging camp. Hold on a minute, I need a moment. Oh, I love my logging camp, it's so awesome. Um, so it's been a while, and so rather than land track and cutting wood and sitting bench work, I want to get some scenery work done. So what you see behind me is a scene that I call Fertile Valley. I almost called it Switch Junction. Ah, that's over there. Also, we need to take a look at this. <clears throat> just kidding. This has nothing to do with what we're doing. We'll just put that down. I just like looking at it. I'd like to introduce you to two characters in today's drama. One is the styrofoam you're used to seeing me use. This is white. Um, I don't even know what you call it. I call it white styrofoam. It's beaded and um, it's a lot of fun. It's what I've used everywhere on the layout. I'm also introducing this. This is what we call the pink stuff. The pink extruded foam board. I got me a razor knife now. Supposedly what happens is you just cut yourself like a, like a score it kind of thing and then you snap it and then it happens. So we're gonna just score it and snap it. So. I'm only approximating this right now because I am not concerned with exact details. I've got some scoring happening. I'm gonna try not to cut my hand. And it is, ugh, score, score. <laughs> That's the kind of comedy you get in my hobby room. All right, so we scored it. Now we just, it just snaps. That's amazing. We have snappage, people. All right, let's get this out of here for right now. Over here. Oh, I'm going all the way down, people. I'll be back in a minute. Get down underneath here, and I'm gonna trace out where the bench work is. I am too old for this. All right, so I got that piece installed. Well, sort of. I still need to go back and do some caulking to secure it and maybe add some supports back here where it's a little flimsy. And then um, I can already picture the moo cows sitting up there on the layout with a train running by. That is awesome. In this episode, we're gonna, and we're gonna, and we're gonna, boy, all that's coming up right now. The logging camp module used to connect over here to the port and this track used to go to the Portsmouth yard. This was the old coal trestle. And this road right here used to head over to the port. Well, we got rid of the port, right? The port's not going here anymore. It's Fertile Valley instead. So we'll go ahead and pull the, uh, I love this coal trestle, by the way. We'll pull this out of the way. And so what you see here is kind of what we're dealing with now. What I wanna do is I wanna make this a two lane road. And like most things, I just sort of make this up as I go along. So we're gonna just sort of stick the saw in right here. 
and have a go. Ha! Okay, so with all that cutting done and that whole area prepared for the new road, I went ahead and put in the lower plane. I did that using a single piece of extruded foam board and I used the old approximate, cut, fit, and repeat technique. I just marked it out with a Sharpie, uh, scored it with the X-Acto knife, snapped it, then stuffed it in there. But the finished product, in my opinion, is looking pretty sweet. Back up in here, we're gonna have the orchard, the orchard loading facility. We'll have the cows way up in the upper plane and cars and trucks just driving through on the paved road. In this episode, we're gonna tweak the bench work a little bit and we're gonna lay out the main line. That sounds like a lot of work, so why not get started right now? Now, many of you know, I do a show for Model Railroader Magazine for Model Railroader Video Plus, and it's the Portsmouth Project Build. As part of cutting all that in, I had to go through and screw the OSB down on top of the layout. It's integral to the structure of the layout. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sneak in a little piece, some highlights, from the video I did for MRVP relative to that and hope we don't get caught. We're also gonna use two different drywall screws here. I've got these number six by one and five eighths drywall screws that are gonna screw that plywood down. And I got some number eight by two, by two and a half inch drywall screws that I'm gonna set in the back at an angle and hopefully it will cinch this thing up against the wall so we get rid of that wobbliness because um, I don't think that's going to work for a model railroad. Okay, I got all the screws in there we're going to put in, but now it's time for the reinforcement screws we put in the back. And what that's just done is it's gone through the plywood, through the framing, and I actually have a shear wall back here. It's all plywood behind the drywall. Okay, time for the moment of truth. We just glued this down and I put those diagonal screws in the back of the layout. Now take a look at this. Uh, it's not hardly deflecting at all, even if I put a bunch of weight on it. I wanna know where the backdrop sits. So I can go 10 feet of, I don't know, some kind of flats we're gonna put in there or something and then 10 feet to the, of right away to the track itself. So that's like 20 scale feet plus whatever this is, and that's gonna determine where the main line goes. And screw it down so that that. Now I made the hole at the end of this one by three big enough to receive a Sharpie. You should just be able to put it in like that and then just draw that arc around. And so hopefully by just doing this, I'm getting, well, it's not exactly accurate. In this episode, we're gonna mix things up a little bit. We're heading back over to Fertile Valley where we're gonna rust some track, paint some ties and do a little ballasting. It's gonna be a long night, people. And it starts right now. It's time to get down to painting this track and then ballasting it. So to get started on that, I want to introduce you to these little gems. These are the railroad ties I cut off the track uh, to make room for the rail joiners when I put it together. Well, we save these and then I take my X-Acto knife and I cut off the railroad uh, spikes and slide them back in under the track. And there's the double track main. Man, does that look good. I love that ballast. It's kicking my butt right now. It's so awesome. The mission was 
to ballast the inside of the tunnels, ballast the track inside those tunnels, and it came out awesome. I'm very happy with the results. In this very special episode of It's My Railroad, the regular guy makes a startling confession. By the time I've done it, it may just be a big pile of poo sitting on my railroad. But train's coming through it. Okay, so let's get started on these mountains. Uh, but before we do a little disclaimer, um, the reason these mountains aren't already done is because I have no idea how to do this right now. This is a hot wire knife that was given to me by one of our subscribers whose name is Anthony. And what's next is this. I've got all these random shapes of styrofoam here. White styrofoam. Sorry, people. This is the direction I decided to go. I'm just going to start... Um, hacking these up and sticking them in. I've got white styrofoam, I've got pink styrofoam. I decided to just put all this in, make a mass of styrofoam that I can come back and carve into some uh, mountainous looking thing. Uh, there's not gonna be a whole lot of chit chat happening while I'm doing this because frankly, I don't know what I'm doing right now. In this episode, we're gonna... Oh yeah, baby. And it all starts right now. You'll notice I came back in here and I added these bigger shapes in the back to give some more mass back there to kind of get rid of this sort of cut off cliff kind of thing I had going. I think this way I can mold the sculpt the mold around it, um, blend it down into a scree. I think it's gonna look pretty good. So let's get on that and then let's mix up some sculpt the mold and turn this into a big white wedding cake. I just keep going through and slowly but surely getting that slimy plaster to take out the pits and whatnot. Unless you want the pits, then do whatever you're gonna do. I'm gonna keep working. Well, there you go, rail fans. That is four hours out of my life that was well worth the investment. Look at this. Remember when it was just like different kinds of styrofoam, all these funky shapes and whatnot, and now it's got some character. It's got some, almost some realism. Whoa, from my hobby room, realism? Yeah, it can happen. In this episode, we're gonna take some paint and turn some white sculpt mold into an awesome mountainous landscape, the regular guy way. Boom, that's an episode and it all starts right now. The regular model railroader works with what he has. I'm not gonna go through and re-sculpt and mold this. I may have made some mistakes, but uh, next time around, I won't make those mistakes. It's part of the hobby. It's part of what I enjoy about it. And now listen, people, it's like 5,000 degrees out here in the hobby room. So this paint's gonna probably dry pretty quick. We'll put a little bit on at a time. Like that. Take the brush. You know what? I'm pretty happy with it. Boom, that's just the way it's gonna be. May or may not brush this just yet. I don't know if this is gonna be rock or if this is gonna be dirt. I kinda wanna make it match the logging camp. I don't really know right now, but for now I know I can get that top part, so we're gonna get on that. All right, just ahead of moving on, let's figure out how we're gonna integrate this piece into the scene. Ah, just kidding. When well, we're done. So that that's pretty much all I'm gonna do right there. But I've got some other areas here. There's like sort of a ridge here. There's sort of a ridge here. And where there's not quite a ridge, I just fake it. I just make one, frankly. A little bit more paint on the brush. Come through and get this action happening just like this. Just take a little bit of this gray paint and start painting. 
Hey rail fans, welcome to my hobby room to the Brownsmith Railroad and to the Fertile Valley Project Build well underway. As you can see, we got quite a bit done up in here and I'm really proud of it. Can't wait to show you everything. Well, Rail fans, that's how I made that crib wall. It came out totally awesome. I'm really stoked by it. Every time I look at it, uh, there's nothing I would have done differently. And you can see it was pretty easy to do. You guys can do that at home. Hey, welcome back to my hobby room and the final part of our three-part vacation mini-series where I'm taking you through how I scenic and finished the upper portion of Fertile Valley. We are gonna start calling this Riley's Point. In this video, we're gonna finish the basic landscaping for the Dowling's Orchard Diorama. We're also gonna put in a fascia, tie all that together using nothing but regular guy techniques. I did this by putting down dirt just like you would any other kind of ground cover. Just laid it right down and let it dry. When it was done drying, it looked like hard mud with cracks in it. I basically sifted some dirt onto that brushed it around with a brush, and then just use my fingers to sort of rub it in, even going down the road. Let's get the fascia in. In this video, we're gonna take one final look at Fertile Valley. I'm gonna show you the condition of my hobby room and I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna put my trains away. 
Right here is where I'm ultimately gonna put in my water tower. I, I'm just not inspired to build it and install it right now. I've spent a great deal of time up here on the whole Fertile Valley scene. Pretty happy with it for the time being. I'll get back to putting that water tower in at some point. Some of the details I did put in though are these uh, employee cars here parked next to the orchard packing shed. I also took some advice I got from a subscriber in a comment and I put these two picnic tables in here. This is like where the employees take their break. They have their lunch right here on this lawn and I think it actually looks pretty awesome. So I'm very happy with that. So all in all with the vehicles on there and all the road signs and picnic tables and even a little tractor in there, I really think it looks good for now. I have the rest of the detail parts. I just don't want to put them in right now <laughs> is the way it goes. So here's, well, here's where I'm going, all right? You've seen all that. You've seen the condition of the hobby room. You see what a just poop hole it is right now. It's just a mess. Anyway, listen, this doesn't work for me anymore, frankly. This mess I have in here, I can't find tools. Um, I've got freight cars getting banged up and locomotives that don't work anymore. And the dust level in here is getting all over the model, all over my rolling stock. And the reason is because I'm doing this out of sequence. And the reason I'm doing it out of sequence is because I got to make a video. I got to show them how to go from here to here to here to here to here. I can't just jump all over the place. I can't do this and then do that, do this. Yeah, you know what? You can. I'm not going to guarantee how often you're going to see a video come out of here. Um, I'm going to be doing what I'm doing. I'll roll camera on it. And when I got enough for a good video, a quality video, in my opinion, I'll produce that and show it to you. I need to focus on why I'm a model railroader. Just about a year ago, I set out on a mission to build a hobby room in my garage and put a model railroad in it and get it complete up to an operational main line. And I'm here to tell you, I've done it. And in this video, I'm gonna show it to you. I am totally stoked right now because I have an operational main line. This train that you see right here, we're about to embark on a journey This is so cool. Well, there you go, rail fans. That is one year of model railroading. Finally had the main line that I've always wanted and I really enjoy watching the trains go round and round. You know, at some point I actually got to get back to work on this thing and build some of these scenes and that'll be for future videos. But thanks again for joining me this time on 
It's my railroad. And until next time, my name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends.